This is the Avaya Podcast Network. APN. Technology, news, and information. All in one place. Hey everyone, it's Fletch, Business Development Manager for Avaya Public Safety Solutions, and this is Emergency Call Recording for Multi-Line Telephone Systems, Best Practices to Ensure Reliability and Resiliency. The recording of telephone call audio, regardless of the call nature, may be illegal or regulated in specific jurisdictions. This presentation represents technical best practices that should be considered for recording application resiliency and make no claims to the legality of actually recording telephone conversations at a specific location. Prior to recording any public telephone call, customers should seek legal guidance as to the existence and applicability of such legislation and the specific requirements of notification to the user. If in-band audio notification tones are required, the insertion of these tones on an emergency call could severely impact the ability of public safety to hear and understand the problem. This could significantly delay and impact emergency call response by first responders. The monitoring of E911 calls that egress a telephone system has been a requirement or ask from the field for many years. Is this or is this not a good idea might just surprise you. Let's take a look at the pros. By being able to monitor the E911 call, you can provide administrative staff or security the audio of the call to better understand the situational awareness of where the call is and what exactly is happening. But let's look at some of the cons to determine if this is a good idea or not. If you're going to do this, you have to place the recording solution on every trunk to be effective. This can become a scaling issue due to cost or by limiting the E911 call specific routes. Ideally, an emergency call should be able to take any path out of the system. Placing the solution on the trunk side may be a single point of failure in the call path. For example, if all calls have to traverse that device, full redundancy of the device is required, and that includes the ability to reject calls from the PBX if there are problems that are downstream. Simply disabling the box to allow it to fail over is not acceptable. The audio may not actually provide the information that's needed. Although background audio is sometimes effective, it doesn't assist in all situations. It doesn't address the concern about location mobility and multiple appearance devices. Additionally, it raises questions on privacy and security, as some areas have very specific rules and regulations that are applicable to telephony call privacy. It really does nothing to enhance location discovery. It's not tied to the registration process of the device or even aware when a device is located. Mobility and location awareness are the real issues at hand. Because it's not performing discovery, it really does nothing to improve location accuracy. Don't count on the user knowing where they are or how to describe their location. If the solution is not one-way audio, it may actually invoke additional audio into the call path. This can complicate the emergency response further by injecting additional audio that can potentially confuse first responders or mask other important information. If you rely on this as your 911 solution and it's deemed to be inadequate, it could expose your enterprise to liability risks. Since this solution is not really solving a problem, the enterprise may be viewed as doing nothing to address the real issue at hand. Some jurisdictions actually prevent monitoring or intercepting of any call, which would include an E911 call. So be careful that your concept doesn't actually violate any law in a particular area. This is especially true in some states that require all parties to be notified of the monitoring. And that monitoring notification may need to be a tone that's inserted on the line, and that tone could potentially confuse or block important audio coming from the origination point. The NINA model legislation recommends that if interception of E911 calls to on-site personnel is to be utilized, those individuals must maintain the same level of accreditation as those in the PSAP. So although it may improve some specific use case scenarios, quite often it introduces these other concerns. So while the idea of recording emergency calls that occur in your enterprise may seem like a good idea, it's actually frowned upon by several industry experts. In addition to adding complexity to the architecture, it may introduce a single point of failure. 
This black hole effect could actually impede the egress of any call, including emergency calls for assistance. Applications and or hardware that are actually in the call path have a potential to block all emergency communications that egress from the PBX. Failover on complete and partial failures must be considered to prevent the black hole scenario, where connectivity from the application to the PSTN is lost, however the application appears to be operating nominally to the PBX. In this situation, the PBX is not aware there is a downstream failure in the call path. With system level recording, there is no single point of failure. When communications recording is applied at the system level, a failure of the recording application will result only in the loss of recorded media. Since it's not in the call path, the call session will continue to egress to the PSTN network and ultimately to the public safety answer position as desired. By concentrating on on-site notification of emergency events and letting those events egress the system on any facility solves the problem of increasing situational awareness without potentially degrading service. For a full list of Avaya-tested E911 solutions, go to devconnectmarketplace.com and search on E911. You're listening to APN, the Avaya Podcast Network. Find us on the web at avaya.com slash APN.